I hated to cut down this maple that had the bad luck to be growing right where I'm going to be planting grapes. So it casts a big shadow over all my crops. It's been sitting there for a hundred years or almost a hundred years and I hated to cut it down. And I also would just hate to use it for uh, firewood. Uh, I happened to see one of these chairs uh, at a store and I said, boy, this looks like something that would be kind of fun to put together. And uh, as you'll see, it's a fairly simple process. So far, so good. I'm the kid who, you know, spent the entire semester in shop making a napkin holder. So I'm, my skills as a woodsman are not uh, all that acute. But uh, this is the type of project that virtually anybody with a chainsaw and access to wood can do. I've only had this chainsaw a couple of years. Before this, uh, my son and I would cut all our wood by hand. And I had some notions about doing this by hand, but it would take a couple of years probably by myself. Okay, that's going to be the chair. Now comes the fun part. Now the plan is to uh, cut the legs and do that by making a notch down to about here and then another one at right angles and so you'll have four legs sticking out. Okay, we're about a third of the way done now. For the back, I'll cut this way and then I'll have to cut, put it down and cut it this way. Chainsaws are not designed for ripping so it's always a problem to cut with the grain as opposed to cross cutting. Now comes the real fun part. I'm very happy that the ground stayed frozen. This wouldn't be fun to do in mud. Just before the big snowstorm I had designs of moving them down with a toboggan but that didn't work out very well. Who designed this path anyway? Ah. Most of the things I do are sort of labor intensive, but they're labors of love. And uh, you get a lot more satisfaction, obviously, seeing something that you designed and built, and I didn't grow it, uh, but certainly something I harvested and made use of. And this will endure more than uh, like that one tree, if I just used it for firewood, would probably give me a month or two of wood. This will give me a lifetime, and I hope generations of, uh, after me, lifetimes of enjoyment. <sighs> This is an angle grinder, and what this will do is uh, take off the bark, and then you can also shape it. They, frankly, they frighten me a little bit, so, uh, but it's better to be frightened than too casual. I can do a little bit of low-tech uh, prep work here. This is why I do it outside. The guy who invented the angle grinder is probably saying, what the hell is he doing this for? Just use the grinder. The big challenge now, again, is I'm not sure uh, how to finish this. And again, whether I'm going to keep these outside or inside. I know that if I put them, because this tree was green when I cut it, it'll continue to dry and check and crack. If you let it dry too quickly, so the best thing to do is let it sit outside, not in the elements. I'll cover them up or I'll put them under the eaves. And then uh, there'll probably be some warping, perhaps some twisting and so forth, but if it dries slowly, then the big challenge again is to decide whether to use something like tongue oil or linseed oil, or to go with a polyurethane or a varnish. But there's plenty of time to worry about that. For now, I still have plenty of wood up there to cut probably enough for four or five more chairs so back to work <laughs>